Thank you, Mother Mildred. Mm -hmm. He raises the poor from the dust. That's Psalms, 11, Psalms 113 from verse 7 to 9. He raises the poor from the dust and leaves the needy from the ash heap. He sits them with princes, with the princes of his people. He settles the childless woman in her home as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. Another translation, the NLT says, he lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He sets them amongst princes, even the princes of his own people. He gives the childless woman a family, making her a happy mother. Amen. 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 So what the Lord is doing this season of expansion and divine intervention and whatever else he is doing that we do not know because he always has something planned. I know the plans that I have for you. So the Lord is saying, he has been saying, and he's still saying that he's raising us up from where our blood by virtue of DNA, the things that have come upon us based on our fallen nature. And the list goes on and on. He's talking about our limitations. Amen. So when he says he leaves the poor from the dust, it is poor like you know it. And then the other limitations that come with our fallen nature, except we turn to the Lord. So he leaves the poor, he leaves us from anger, sickness, bodily weakness, poverty, envy, pride, anxiety, gossip, jealousy, laziness, missteps, misunderstandings, and all the misses that we can ever encounter from slumber, from the fact that we are slow, intelligent, because these are the things that come by virtue of our bloodline as human beings our DNA. We are prone to being intelligent. A child can be intelligent and smart, but then no wisdom. We are prone to ignorance, depression, low self-esteem, shyness, lack of confidence, mental conditions, financial instability, and the lack thereof, stupidity, foolishness, sluggishness, misfit. Some say there are social misfits. And then indecisiveness, you cannot make a decision at any, at any time in, in, in life. Aggression, Thievery, some people steal for no reason, deceptiveness, perversion, witchcraft, divorce, being obstinate, worldliness, vanity, being pliable. Being pliable, we, we need to be pliable before the Lord so that he can mold us because he is our potter. That is a good thing. But being pliable, being double-minded, and then not being able to decide the waver here and there as the wind and the wave blows, it comes by virtue of our, our bloodline and DNA. Being stiff, stiff neck, you're so stubborn, near success syndrome, you never get it. You're always almost there, but never there. Imprisonment, bondage, missing the mark at all times, desolation, heartbrokenness, lack of integrity, and the list goes on and on. The Bible says the Lord says he's lifting us from that place. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes, it will be so for you if you believe it. And the needy from the garbage dump. That's where we are without the blood of Jesus, without Christ. That's where we are. And then he says he is lifting them up from there because he is a lifter of our heads. Mm -hmm. So he's lifting us from there and setting us among princes. So what does the Lord do when he comes, when he introduces the blood of Jesus? Cleanses us and then clothes us with, with garments of righteousness, of royalty. So that's what he's doing. He's setting us among princes. Even the princes of his own people, he's talking about us, the princes of our own people, not in a stranger's land, where you are being known, your company, your everyday, you know, your day-to-day -day people that you meet, the people of your, of your state, of your county, people that know you, your business partners, your friends, your families, your family members. He says that he is setting us among princes, even among the princes of our own people. So princes of our, our own people will be the high ranking place. That's where he's taking us from dust, from garbage, dumb when nobody knows us, where we are being tossed left and right because of our own DNA and our own bloodline. His blood is cleansing us and taking us, lifting us up to a place of royalty so we can begin to sit. Another translation says to a place of honor. Amen. Amen. Then verse 9 says he gives the childless woman a family, making her a happy mother. So childlessness, like you know it, unable to bear a child, and then being unfruitful in every other aspect of life. He, say, he says that he is giving a childless woman a family. 
making her a happy mother. So this other translation says it better. Um, he settles a childless woman in her home as a mother of children. When a woman is childless, when you are unfruitful, when you don't have a job, when you are sick, when you are a thief, you know, your family members, they know that. And then when the Lord delivers you from barrenness, from, from thievery, from um, bondage, from depression, everyone in the family gets to know that, oh, wow, finally. So that's what the Lord is putting an oh wow in the mouth of people in the name of Jesus. People yeah. that know us, that oh wow, the story changed finally. What is going on? That is where the Lord is taking us this season, mm -hmm. putting a smile in our mouth. So just to throw more light on the subject matter of what the blood of Jesus has done for us and is doing for us, let us look quickly at Ezekiel 16, 6 to 14. It says, and then I came by and I saw you all miserable and bloody. That's where the Lord saw us. We were in blood, our own blood, actually, by virtue of our bloodline. He saw us all in misery, the misery that are listed, all of this nonsense up here. That is where we are every day until the blood of Jesus comes for us to rescue us. He says when he came by, that's where he saw us. In all of this, another version says, I saw you kicking in your own blood, kicking in all of this nonsense here. That's where we were. And then, yes, I said to you, lying there, helpless and filthy, of course, leave, grow up like a plant in a field. And you did, you grew up, you grew tall. That was by the decree of the Lord, decree of the Lord. He said, grow up and he helps you to grow, of course. And then um, you grew tall and mature as a woman, full breasted with flowing hair, but you were naked, sorry, and vulnerable, fragile and exposed. That's where we are, vulnerable, fragile, exposed. And I came by again and saw you, saw that you were ready for love and a lover. I took care of you, dressed you, and protected you. The Lord has protected us with his blood. He has dressed us with garments of righteousness, garments of royalty. I promised you my love and entered the covenant of marriage with you. I, God, the master, gave my word. You became mine. I gave you a good bath. He washed us with his word. Amen. And we grew and became what he wanted us to be. Jesus Christ is the word. Washing off all that old blood, that nonsense off of us, and anointed you with aromatic oil. I dressed you in a colorful gown and put leather sandals on your feet. Amen. Mm -hmm. I gave linen blouses and a fashionable wardrobe of expensive clothing. From dust, from a heap of ash, from a dumb garbage to now, wearing these beautiful things. I adorned you with with, with um, jewel and jewelry and I placed bracelet on your wrist, fitted you out with a necklace, emerald rings, sapphire earrings, and a diamond hair. You were provided with everything precious and beautiful with exquisite clothes and elegant food, garnished with honey and oil. You were absolutely stunning. So when the Lord picked us from the nonsense that we were kicking in, that's in our own blood, he did all of this. He protected us. He washed us. You were a queen. Queen stands symbolic of royalty. You were a king. You were a queen. You became a prince, princess. You became world famous. Amen. Do, you, do we see what the Lord is doing? Taking us from heap of dust, from garbage dump, to become world famous. A legendary beauty brought to perfection by my adornment. How did he adorn us? Another version said, by the price that he paid, that is the blood of Jesus. That is what the blood of Jesus does for us. Decree of God, the master, in the name of Jesus. So this morning, as we partake of the, of the blood, the body and the blood of Jesus, we remember that our brokenness in our body, our bodily weakness, sickness, depression, and all of that, the Father took it, Jesus Christ took it upon himself. He was bruised for our iniquity. The Bible says that by his stripes we were healed. All kinds of things that he went through. And his blood has washed us. His word has washed us. He has purified us, you know. Taking us, when, when we say skip the bloodline, this is what we are skipping all of these things into Jesus' bloodline. We are joined, we are co-heirs with the Father today because of the blood of Jesus. So this morning we say thank you, Father, for the broken body of Jesus. It was yeah. that we may be whole in every area of our lives, that we we will not be desolate. We will not be heartbroken. We will have integrity. We will have the opposite of all of this 
negativity going on here. We say thank you because you took all of this and more upon your body and your body was broken so that we may be repaired, so we may be, we may be fixed in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And therefore we give you glory. Let us break the body and partake of it with the understanding that he has fixed all of this. He was broken so that we may be whole in all of these areas in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the blood of Jesus, we say, Father, thank you for your blood has indeed washed us, washed us as white as snow. This blood that speaks, it speaks at night even while we are asleep. It is so loud. Where the blood goes, the Father follows. Therefore, we thank you for the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary because your blood is speaking better things for us in the name of Jesus. And the Father concurs with his action, saying that when I see the blood, I shall surely pass over in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you as we drink the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 So we are going um into the message of today, which is expansion. Expansion, like you see it up here, expanding. Amen. So so the title of my message today is uh subtitle. I mean the title of the expansion as we know it, but why why do we need to expand? Why expansion? Amen. Amen. We need to expand because we have been commanded to expand, simply that. How so? So we're going to um, talk about Isaiah 54 from verse 1 to 4, I think. Yes. The eternal covenant of peace. The Bible says, sing, O barren one who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not been in labor. Barring one who has not been in labor, cry aloud, sing, sing, cry out with songs of joy. You who have not been in labor, labor meaning that you, you have not been pushing. There is no contraction going on anyway. So you're not in the process of birthing anything. People are giving birth to, you know, all to visions and all whatnot. And you, no signs of labor at all. You have not been in labor. People are laboring and bringing alive, bringing to to giving birth to, to things, you know, anything that you can think about. Children, visions, businesses, disciples, you know, but there is nothing going on with you. The Lord is saying this morning that barren one, you who has not been in the process, in the process of birthing anything, the time has come. Sing aloud, cry aloud, comfort break into singing, a decree by the Lord. And why is he saying so? Because we have been in the process of, we have raised altars in the past. We have raised the altar of establishment, and then we have raised the altar of manifestation, and then the altar of expansion that is, you know, coming in August. So the Lord began to minister to me. He said that he, there is a plan for expansion. We want to expand. It is beautiful to expand, but then he has a plan he has something set in, in place for us. So we need to establish. And how do we establish? Of course, Mother Mildred and, and, and Dr. Kwame comes, they come with the uh, with the blueprint. The father is saying this, this month, this next month. So we, we keep going because they deliver the word from the father. But then he told me that some people do not manifest. I don't know. That's what he said, that there was establishment and then suddenly no um manifestation. And then now we're in expansion. So... It's kind of overwhelming to some people that are like, oh, manifestation, I didn't really see anything there. And now expansion, uh, what is coming now? But it, it, it's not anybody's fault, but yes. He said, because there was a process, there was a thing of, of not aligning disobedience. You know, the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. He can fix all of that, but then he requires that we align. When they say, this is what is going on now, it's not because... Um, we want to be bothered or we don't have something to do or just want to engage you. It is what the father is saying. He says people do not manifest, but his grace is sufficient because he said the blood of Jesus, this blood of Jesus is doing so much, always does. He says because of the blood, people would manifest and break into expansion. That's what he told me. And I was like, thank you, father. 
He says it's going to be a double portion because of what the blood has done. Whatever the blood says is what he does. The blood says we qualify even, even while we are our disobedience that he will pardon. Amen. Isaiah 61 verse 7 says, instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of, of honor. You will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. The Berean Standard Bible says, instead of shame, my people will have a double portion and instead of humiliation, they will rejoice in their share, the share of manifestation that you missed out on. The Lord says you would rejoice in your share and so they will inherit a double portion in their land and everlasting joy will be theirs only because of the blood. Because if he wants to go by what we do, by our disobedience and misalignment, and he, he made it clear that it is not because you did not align in this area, it doesn't pardon you for all your misalignment in every area of your life. But then he brought to my attention the work that the priest at the altar is doing. Because when they call, our, because how, how it is done that I know is that there are times when prayers are being done and everybody on the, on the line, their names are being called one after the other. It is all of those things. The altar is speaking for you. The blood of Jesus is speaking for you. The priest on the altar, they don't speak the sacrifice. The Lord is looking at it and pardoning us. That's what he was telling me. I was like, thank you, Father, for another chance. If we will just take up this opportunity and do better. Amen. Amen. I come bearing with me. I come in the name of the Lord. Believe me. Amen. Amen. So he said, so I had to write this down so I don't forget it. He says, some will begin their manifestation by faith as they receive this message and overflow into expansion. Amen. And he says that we did not command it by no means. The blood is commanding this for you and me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 So Amen. he says, um, the Bible says in Isaiah, this is B version of verse 1, for the children of her desolate one will be more than the children of, of her who is married, says the Lord. So there's a tendency for those who are married to bear children. As a matter of fact, there's, there's an entitlement attached to it because I am married. For the for those who say, right, for the righteous that think better of themselves than anybody else, the people like that. And then they think that, all. Oh, this other person doesn't have a child because they're not married anyway. So um, or whatever is going on with them, but I am married. So by virtue of being married, I'm supposed to bear children. The Lord says that in this season, there are some blessings that there are some, not exactly blessings, there are some outcome that comes by virtue of people being entitled to certain positions and connections. But he says, again, because of the blood of Jesus and because he is the protocol breaker, the children of the desolate, those who did not think that they can bear because they don't have those connections to those places, to those high places, will begin to bear even more than those who are connected because he is a God of all flesh and there is nothing that he cannot do. Yes. All because he wants to see us expand. Because why, why do we need to expand? Because there is a decree by the, by the blood of Jesus and the Lord is going by it. The blood of Jesus is able to purchase connections unbeknownst to you and me he's able to bypass though the bible says do not think too highly of yourself there are people who think too highly of themselves because they've got a connection they've got a decrease they've got the um their children they've got everything going going for them not necessarily they don't even know the lord like that but they have those things but then sometimes you have children of god who don't have those connections the lord says he is the connection that we need and he's going to do things that that people would have would have the attention of other people. He is a connection that we need in the name of Jesus. So mm. we'll begin to bear the children for the children of the desolate will be more. We're gonna have we're gonna have more than those who are married in the name of Jesus, than mm. those who have it all going for themselves. The blood of Jesus is sufficient to birth for us contracts, jobs, positions that we do not think possible. Because if the blood of Jesus can do what man can do, then do we need the blood of Jesus? We don't. But then it is there to, you know, to fill up that space, to bridge all of those things that man cannot. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So 
So this is what I wrote here. It is, this is a decree by the by the Lord, provoked and powered by the blood of Jesus, that you are birthing things in dimensions and capacities that will cause people to pay attention to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just because of the blood of Jesus. The Lord is a protocol breaker. He says in Isaiah 43, 19, that behold, I am doing a new thing. I am changing the narrative. What is, what is the narrative? The narrative is that when you have, when you know the governor, when you know the king, it is easy for you to get those positions, those things. But he says, you, who doesn't know anybody, you who sits at the gate, you who sits at the dump, at the garbage, at the dust heap, that's where you are. But behold, I do a new thing for you. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I am lifting you from that, that, from that garbage dump into a place of royalty like we saw while we were partaking of the Holy Communion. He has... He has a sole duty this season to lift us up from a low place to a place of royalty, to a place of recognition. People must see us. Must. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. I mean, how, how, what do I need to do for people to see me? I don't know much. But he's saying that I do a new thing. It, it's almost like he's forcing it on us because he, he, has, he has the obligation to, to see that his word is accomplished. If he is saying expansion, he needs to see his own children expand too. Enough with the worldliness and the people out there making all the money and making all, you know, gaining all the, the souls for the for the kingdom of darkness. He wants to see souls gain in his kingdom. He wants to see his children be established. Amen. He mm. says, I do a new thing. Now it springs for, do you not perceive it? I will make a way. Jehovah Yahweh, the one who creates something out of nothing. You are in nothing in your ash heap, in your garbage dump. Nobody sees you. You're kicking in your own blood, living a life of nothingness. He says, I, Jehovah Yahweh, the one who makes something out of nothing, I will make a way in the wilderness. Wilderness is just dust. It has no designated path or whatever. Mm -hmm. Rivers in the desert, impossibilities becomes possible with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First, to the, enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, and spare no expense. The Lord is talking to us about capacity. Do what you are thinking. There is capacity. There is capacity. Brother who wants to get married and is like, this is the lady, but no money. Start making plans. You have a business. The business is growing right before your eyes. Make room in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? You're thinking about, you have an idea in your mind. Is, is there a cost for it? Go after that, uh, that, what do I say? Go take a course for that thing you're thinking about. You do not bring it upon yourself. The Lord is planting something in you. Grow it and do something. Up. There is capacity. Expand in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus has redeemed the work of our hands from painful toils on the cross of Calvary. His, his palms were nailed. He was nailing painful toils and leads to nothing on the cross of Calvary, redeeming the works of our hands, that when we walk, we will see what we have worked for. The blood of Jesus was shed from his head. The, pain, the painful, the forceful placement of the crown of thorns on his head was devastating. He was trying to redeem us from the inability to decide. He took up the forceful placement of crowns of thorns on his head. He was forcefully placed. He had to agree that do it so that these people can, so that my children can have the ability to think, to decide and begin to act upon it. So he, Jesus Christ has done so much. We cannot just sit and do nothing about it because the people of the world, they don't know Jesus. They don't recognize him. They don't know how to go after these degrees, after these, after these degrees, after this education, after these vocational programs, after they do it all, they, they go by their own strength and they achieve things that would not last. So what more of us that know about the blood of Jesus? And we have the word that is pushing us forward. The Bible says, the Lord is saying there is capacity. Spare no expense. If you have $500, if there's a cost of $500, and you have that thing in your head, go pay and do it and see what the Lord would do. Spread out your home. Build an addition. Expand. Enlarge. Do, do it in the name of Jesus. Excuse me. And he's saying that find the right Pair, find the right company. Do not yoke yourselves with unbelievers because, for instance, you may be uh, 
an engineer and then you're starting a business and then there is another engineer, but, but then he doesn't know the Lord. That's not who to, to bond with or to pair with to start a company. Because if you do that, the, the things that we listed above while we were taking communion, you're going to face all of that with that other person. He may come with depression. He may come with lack of integrity. He may come with brokenness, something that would just crumble that company in. The lack of Jesus, the lack of the blood of Jesus is just enough to, to ruin the company. Find the right pair. Find the right company. Do not yoke yourselves with unbelievers in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 9 to, 9 to 10, it is better to have a partner than go, go eat alone, share the work, share the wealth, and if one falls down, the other helps. But if there is no one to help, the Bible says tough, tough it will be. Amen. Because we talk about the strength, the cord of three strands that is not easily broken. That's, that's the word of God. So the Lord is telling us to pair. Don't do it all by yourself. Don't do it all by yourself. Pair up. For instance, okay, let me just give this um text here. Exodus 31, 1 to 7 says, God spoke to Moses, see what I have done. I have personally chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the spirit of God, giving him skill and knowledge and know-how and expertise in every kind of craft to craft design and work in gold, silver, and bronze to cut and set gemstones to carve wood. He's an all-around, he's an all-around craftsman. Not only that. So he can be all that, but the Lord says not only that, but I have given him Oholia, son of Ahisama of the tribe of Dan to work with him. And to all who have an aptitude of craft, I have given the skill to make all things I've commanded you. So every Oholiab should find their Bezalel, amen, and mm -hmm. pair up and do exploits. Do exploits in winning souls because it is not all about getting the money. We need the money for the gospel, but then pair up right. Win souls together. The apostles of old went out in groups of twos and threes, and sometimes all together with Jesus. It was always a team. The, the Lord is calling for teamwork, teamwork in businesses, teamwork in starting up companies, teamwork in winning souls for his kingdom. Team, 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 for we cannot do it alone. Teamwork, even while we pray, for one, one prayer intercessor will cover the other in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I'll just give the floor over to my husband to to add what he has. Amen. 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 I'll just piggyback on um, enlarge your house and build an additional build an addition, spread out your home and spare no expenses. No expense, sorry. Yeah, so I took down some notes in my phone, my phone part. So I'll just read from here. I'll look at um when the topic of expansion was brought uh, to us that we have to talk about expansion. The first thing I did was to uh, look up a couple of verses and see uh, to have a direction on where we're headed. And looking at uh, the book of uh, Isaiah, 50, uh, Isaiah 54, verse 2 to 3, it said, um, it reads, Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate, desolate cities. And when I looked at that, I was like, um, so how does that happen? First and foremost, we have to believe that God can enlarge and expand our posts and we must do what we can or we must 
do make an effort to obey God's commandments regarding to world creation. And we must also uh, develop the capacity to not only receive, but be able to return the wealth. And I also came across uh, in terms of looking at obeying God's commandment of returning the wealth. I looked up the verse, uh, the book of Timothy, uh, chapter 6, verse 17 to 18, which reads uh, divine instruction amongst the way to. So the passage reads, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. So to enlarge or to expand, you can't do it on your own. You must trust and believe that God has everything in control and to do the right thing for us. By ourselves, we, there's a limit to what we can achieve in life. I won't lie, I've been in that position that uh, I thought I could do everything by myself. You know, I just believe that uh, God would do it for me, but I didn't really have the trust. Like something was always pushing me back. I think, oh, I can do this by myself. I make it, it depends on my effort, but <laughs> there's just so much you can do by yourself. You break, you know, and I kept, uh, having wrote a lot of roadblocks. I've had a lot of roadblocks just because I considered that I could do things by myself. And my wife will always remind me of, you know, I don't think uh, uh, you're doing what is right. You're more focused on the mammon side of it. You have to trust that God will do it for you or God will do it for us. And she said, uh, she also, told me like, I don't obey some principles, uh, like basic principles like pain tights, you know, and that I must do the right thing to actually expand. So before I will have, uh, I always think like, oh, the bills in this country are just a lot. And I wouldn't want to do, I'll, I'll always be like, oh, let me take care of uh, the the things, the bills that I have to before I will think about uh, making commitments for tithes or offerings. But down the line, that did not help. You know, the best belief when I started doing the needful, I've witnessed a lot of growth. I won't, <laughs> I've witnessed a lot of growth. Those are just some of the commandments that uh, uh, we have to obey. We have to to not look at the the our circumstances that we can only pay tight or give when we're comfortable, but the the rules, the the, the commandments, or the, the things we must obey that the Bible clearly states, you know. So I wasn't I wasn't you know spiritually sound or in that uh, capacity to to think like. I should only give when I'm fine or when I'm comfortable. So by the moment I started doing what was needed, things have drastically changed for our household and it's only getting better every passing day. Mm -hmm. So for you to expand, you must be, be, be ready to do what the, uh, God asks of us. Amen. You can't do it by your own. Amen. And let's look at the point of uh the said third, you must develop the capacity to return, to receive and return well. I looked up uh the the widow in 2 Kings 4, verse 6. I looked up the um 2 Kings 4, verse 6, yeah. And the we say we should, uh why there was a vessel to fill, there was oil sufficient. And it only ceased to flow when there was no vessel to receive it. So uh, 
Yeah, and so this is a good emblem that the grace of God, while there's an empty, longing heart, there's a continual overflowing fountain of salvation. Then uh, specifically, 2 Kings 4 verse 3 reminds us of uh, God's mercy upon us. So whatever we need, whatever we want, or whatever we wish will be given to us. That's a promise from God. When we ask for God to answer our cries according to his word, he will answer our prayers. Which he says, I will answer, I will give you what you need. What you ask for, when you ask it according to my word. That does not mean we should just go to God and, you know, <laughs> ask. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know which word to put, but some unnecessary demands. <laughs> you know, God, God asks, when we ask for something, it should be according to his word. Would, would that lead us towards the right direction or it would take us to a place that will, will, will make us to drift away from his words? Mm -hmm. You know, so <laughs> we, we should be careful with what we ask from God and if we're actually ready to handle what he gives us. Because uh, <laughs> not not everything that you ask you ever to handle. So you have to be mentally and spiritually ready that what God will give you, you handle it the right way. You used to uh, foster his ministry or uh, his kingdom here on earth. So um, looking at all these, I'll come to a conclusion like uh, divine, uh, divine expansion uh, is about uh, God making room for us to become bigger it refers to growth, it refers to increase and enlargement. Divine expansion is when God intervenes and bring about growth, enlargement, and increase in someone's life, family, ministry, ministry, sorry, business, and our careers. God has been very good to us, to me, and to us in general and my family, uh, because I started moving towards the right direction and started obeying his commandments. Uh, with what I'm doing, I just uh, imagine that uh, once I become the way, the right way he wants me to be, the sky will be uh, my limit and you know, we'll just continue to expand and grow. I prayed a lot and ask God for guidance in my business, in what I'm doing. And I, I, I've promised God that as long as I live, I'll continue to worship. I'll lead my family towards the right direction. I'll continue to worship his name and praise his holy name. Make sure I guide my children to do what is right, to honor and believed in just him and him alone because by ourselves we can we can do it i tried <laughs> it didn't amen. work so, amen and you know i'm just uh going by his lead you know so uh that is what i have to share in regards to you know then also another point which i almost missed out uh it's about uh during the altar of manifestation prophetess uh Vivian and Taranda, uh, Pastor Taranda, the the prayed uh, on us and told us there was a, the we have a business that they see us doing a business together, you know, and she's into uh, medical. She's a medical esthetician, interior designer, and I'm more of, I'm on the other side <laughs> like finance and. Uh, <laughs> e-commerce and stuff like that and i was wondering, like how how does that even add up uh, a, a beautician to uh somebody that is <laughs> e-commerce so i was looking at oh how how are we gonna expand how are we gonna work together so from like that already seen uh expansion coming by us doing it together and all along i wanted to do the business because i i do e-commerce by myself you know, 
she was, she's always, uh, uh, my wife would sit and always look at me like, she needs, he needs help. I need him to say, it. <laughs> you know, then she will, she will make all attempts to make me know that, oh, I need, she needs to be part of this business, you know, but I want to handle it myself. I'm just like, oh, I'll give, uh, 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 I'll not pay attention, you know, but the moment she joined the business, we started growing exponentially compared to when I was doing it by myself. And this just shows that when you have the right company, the right partner, uh, it's very important because uh, mm -hmm. I always presented, uh, I presented my vision and my uh, the goals I have for the business. And she saw that by myself, I cannot handle this. You know, she needed to be part of the business and she has helped a lot. Like I tell her all the time that, you know, this, it will not be possible. The level of growth that we're going right now, it will not be possible without uh, your continuous help. You know, that has, that has really helped uh, our, our business to expand. And I believe we're just getting started, you know. So I, I praise God for uh, the revelation uh, during the, the altar of uh, manifestation. Those are just uh, one of the things that we uh, uh, was said to us, which has really, you know, come into light, and we just keep going. So, thank you all for listening to <laughs> me. <laughs> thank you. To continue. Amen. 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 So we hear the aspect of aligning with the Word of God, and of course, the aspect of pairing with the right company, and as the Spirit leads. Do not pair or yoke yourself with unbelievers. So like I said, Bez Bezalel should find their Oholia. Yes. Find people in the business that the people that do similar, because they did similar, uh, you know, work. But we are all supposed to be the Bezalels and the Ohalia of each other when it comes to the kingdom. When it comes to winning souls, there is no exemption. There is no you know, that one, we're all involved. So now the next point is creativity and creative skills are God-given gifts. Exodus 35, 35, he says, he has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, embroiderers in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen and weavers, all of them skilled workers and designers. So the Lord has given us various um gifts and talents it is not limited to the list that you see here there is more more than this so what do you hear in your head go after it what what are you thinking about your thoughts are not totally your thoughts the holy spirit puts them there when, when the bible says that before i formed you i knew you all of that he knew what you would think he put those things down there so when you come down here you develop them amen the bible says in job 33 15 to 16 in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed. Then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instructions. Some people are like, oh, I have nothing, nothing that I'm thinking about. How do I expand? Read Job 33. Tell the Lord to visit you. He does that when people are sleeping. And you just wake up with a new idea. For example, for myself, I'm an interior designer. Sometimes when I get a contract, I don't necessarily think about the design. I just go to bed and I see what I'm supposed to do. So I wake up and start bringing it to light. So it's different for everybody. So when I say that, what are you thinking? Capacity, do what you are thinking. You can depend on the Holy Spirit to, to you know, to just, what's the word? To just, you know, empower you and give you insights and visions about what you need to do, instructions that you need to follow. Hosea 12, 13 says, the Lord used the prophet to bring Israel up, up. Israel was down, up from Egypt. They were down in Egypt by a prophet. He cared for them. For the people of Israel, they were cared for by a prophet and then they were brought up. Egypt is not a good place. We all know that by now. So if you are in Egypt, if you do not see what it is that you need to see in a dream, the Lord can use a prophet like he did 
like my husband just explained about the prophecy for working together. He can use that to bring you up from that deep place, from that that ash heap, from that dump, from that dirt. He can use a prophet to bring you up from it. All of that will signify Egypt. You can you can come out from there by by the help of a prophet. The message translation says that your real identity is formed through God sent prophets who lead you out, up and out of Egypt and serve as faithful pastors. But today, people are running away from pastors. Oh, I don't want the pastors to know, get into my business. I don't want, eh, past, I don't all this pastor thing. I don't. No, 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 you you would want, because the word of God says that your real identity is formed through God sent prophets who lead you out. They lead you out. Without them, you stay in Egypt for the life of you and serve. They serve you as faithful pastors. And also you have the obligation and the responsibility to serve your leaders. Who has not read the book, Kingdom Honor? Read it. I tell you a secret. Read this book. Serve your leaders even as they serve you. Case in point, Joseph the dreamer brought out. How do you get out? Out from prison. Another translation says he was brought up from the pits because he served his leader. And how did it happen? So the king had a dream, da 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 da. Like we know the dream, I hope, at this point. And then the cup bearer says, Oh, this dream, the king was looking, he saw who could interpret. The cup bearer said, oh, once upon a time I was in prison, me and the chief baker. We had a dream and this guy um, interpreted this dream and it came to pass just the way that he said it. And we were released. The king said, oh, such a man I need. Where is he? He said he is in prison. In the Bible records in verse 14 of Genesis 41, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him quickly out of, out of the dungeon and he shaved, changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. Pharaoh is symbolic of high ranking royalty king, of course. So where was Joseph? In a heap of ash, like we saw while we were partaking of the communion, in an abandoned dump yard in prison. But then because he served, he was going to serve his leader. His leader had called him, so he was brought out. That's the same thing that our pastors do for us. People don't, don't want to deal with their pastors. are like, um, they don't need to know this. We can handle it. No, you cannot handle it. The grace, you don't even have it. Even, you cannot handle it. So they say he they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and he shaved. He changed his clothing because he was going to the princes of his people. He had to look like them. So that's where the Lord takes you when you're willing to serve. He had, he had the option to say, uh -uh, I wouldn't interpret no dream. The king can do whatever with it. But then when he said yes, that's when his breakthrough began. The process, the plan that I have for you, if you would align, if you would obey in the name of Jesus. When he said yes, he had the opportunity to shave and change his clothing, to clothe himself in royalty, to look like the people at the palace. Because he said, yes, I will. So if we can say yes to our leaders, serve them and get them involved, if you will, then only can you come out of the dungeon that you are in, in the heap of ash that you are in. Amen. And then he came to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream and there is no one who can interpret it, but I have heard they begin to hear about us because we obey. When you begin to obey and serve your leaders, Serving your leader is you're serving the Lord, like we do on the platform. When you serve your leaders, you are indirectly serving the Lord. And then he begins, and then people begin to hear about you because you don't even know how. The Bible says that a planter will plant a seed and he wouldn't know how it grows. That's the thing that the Lord can do for us. He said, I have, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. I have had this project. And no, I heard about you. I, I don't know how to go about it. I have this business idea. I heard that you are the only one who can bring it to life. I have done this. I have you are the, where have you been? Just because you said yes to your leaders, and then your real identity begins to form in the name of Jesus. 
And that's how he began to expand. Joseph had been a dreamer. He, he was, he had, he had been established. The Lord has established him. You're a dreamer by all, by all means you dream. And then now he had a chance to manifest. Who did, ex, ex, who did manifestation skip? The Lord is saying you are manifesting and overflowing into expansion. Joseph had his chance to come and manifest. He said yes. And the Lord said, because you are saying yes, you manifest now by interpreting to the king to show him that this is what you are all about. You dream and then you manifest by interpretations and then you overflow. How did he overflow? He interpreted a dream. He says, I have, I have heard it is said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it that you can manifest and even, that you can establish and even manifest. And then so Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is, it is not in me, God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. It is not in me to manifest, it is not in me to expand, except the Lord, except the blood of Jesus. That is what Joseph was saying. And then what did he do? He interpreted everything and said that we need a man that is filled with the spirit of God, led by the spirit, to take over to control the land. And then the governor or the king saw that he was the fit candidate for such a thing. And then his expansion came. Before we knew, before we know who, who did who did Joseph become, we know the story. Because he said, Yes, I will serve the leader. Yes, I would interpret. There was he manifesting. And then he said, Yes. And the Lord said, Yes, you would expand. And he had to rule over the land. It was given to him to rule. That's how it happens. There is a plan that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. That's what the Lord is saying. If only come to the condition. You cannot just take a reckless believer who doesn't want to serve their leaders, who doesn't want to listen to reason and put them up there to expand. They're going to cause chaos. It's going to be chaotic up there. So we need people that are humble, humility in the name of Jesus washed by the blood, washed by the word, and all of that, and then expansion becomes our portion. It is true, the theme is expansion, but then. So he, ex he experienced manifestation and expansion in one city, out of prison. And then another one, we have Mordecai. Where was Mordecai always? At the gate, was sitting there, and then behold, he heard a conversation, gossiping. People were gossiping that we need to kill the king. And then he reported the king. One day he couldn't sleep. And what does the Bible say? It says, bring the books of the chronicle. What was done to the man who reported that I was, who reported the plot against me? Who reported my mother? The people who were plotting to kill me. What was done for this person? They said nothing. He said, how, how be it? Mordecai was at the gate. He wasn't, he wasn't manifesting, he was just sitting there. Or perhaps that was his manifestation, just sitting there. The Bible says, I have a plan. There is a plan that you sit at the gates. You don't come, you just sit there. That's all you need to do. Just align, Amen. just listen, do it like I say. Do not understand the whole picture. of Mordecai sat at the gate. Mordecai who was served by, es I mean, his Esther's cousin, Esther listened to him and then went and became queen. But then he sat at the gate. And now at this point, I can say that he was serving Esther and her husband because, you know, he sat there and then he heard. Because when you sit where the Lord wants you to sit, you begin to hear things. Amen. You begin to hear what he wants you to hear. Just by so doing, those things bring about your expansion. And what was done for the man that reported this act? Nothing. How be it? The father is saying this season. Have you aligned? Yes, I have. And you're not expanding. How be it? He's about to clothe us in, in clothes of royalty. That's what happened to Mordecai. He was put upon a donkey, was it a horse? You know, dressed up in like royalty from the king's gate. He was sitting out there, like, you know, the gate just sitting out there, serving his purpose at the time. That's where he had to be. And then he began to hear, and then elevation, and then expansion. That's good. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Then by a prophet, the Lord brought Jacob's descendant out of Egypt. And by that prophet, they were guarded, protected. Question, who covers you in prayers? I don't want them to know anything. I don't want a third party. I just want to deal with this thing by myself. But you, you want to get out of Egypt. 
out up and out of Egypt. No, you cannot. I'm so sorry. It's the word of God. I wish there was another way out. When the, we have an altar, we have the priests at the altar cleaning themselves for the course of this altar, covering you in prayer. But you don't want to align. Nobody, nobody's going to force you to align. Don't, don't get it wrong. Nobody's going to force you to align. You don't need to say it. Your actions and the spirit knows that you're not aligned. So when you align and submit, then these prayers now begin to work for you. And then you begin to come out of situations so tough. You begin to break free because what is what is wrong with align? What is wrong with submitting? Like, what is wrong? I don't know. I don't know. Verse three, it was still on the same thing. Verse three only. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left and your offsprings will possess the nations. Another translation says your descendants will occupy other nations and will people the desolate cities and resettle the ruined cities. The Bible talks about rebuilding the ancient ruins and cities long devastated. How do we plan to do that? The Lord is trying so hard to raise kingdom financial giants that they will not see to reason. They will not listen. They don't want to. How can the Lord do it? But that's what is required of us this season that we, we do what he is saying. Simply obey. What is wrong with this, with this, this blood of ours? It is so stubborn. We need to join the bloodline and align so the Lord can raise us up. So we can begin to rebuild ancient. Be rebuilding ancient ruins is real. We had we had an apostle. We had apostle calling go to Turkey and spy the land. And she came back with reports that indeed there is ancient ruins that we need to build. Cities long devastated, generations, decades gone by, and nobody cares about the business of the father in this in this in this land. So the Lord is calling us, the remnants, to rebuild these ancient ruins. We're looking at Turkey. Turkey, one way Turkey. That's what is in the air right now. One way Turkey. Turkey is in the air. We need to go there and rebuild. Or rebuilding with what? Money. Money. And then expanding. We go there to expand, to rebuild. So we need money. And then we need we need um, disciples because we need to convert some souls. There's a lot of, we hear that it's 90% Islamic and 10% Christians and other religions, an abomination in the land. So all of these things, these are, we, we need to align. The Lord has, he's looking just, he's looking for but a few people that can just align because he can use one person to do all kinds of things. So if we can just, if we can just be 10 of us, He's going to move in the name of Jesus. And if you're stubborn, you don't want to align, no problem. He's going to raise stones. Anyways, the word of God says that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Fear not, verse 4. You will no longer believe in shame. Don't be afraid. There is more. There is no more disgrace for you. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of widowhood. Simply. No longer living in shame. How how does that come about? You don't just say, um, shame and reproach has been rolled away. How has it been, how how has it been rolled away? Well, I pray against the spirit of shame and da 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 da. No, with what? The Bible says talks about a crown of thorns that was forcefully placed on the head of Jesus to mock his identity. He says he was the king of the Jews, you know, but that's who he was actually. But then they did not agree with him. And then to, what do kings wear? crown of embellished with gold, diamond, sapphire, and all that stuff. But then they decided to do tons and force. Say, this is the crown that fits you, Mr. King of the Jews. And then they put it on his head forcefully, and then blood began to trickle down. And Jesus is in pain. And they disgrace him like that. Disgrace my Jesus. Very big shame. They humiliated the man there. But he says, I would accept this crown of thorn. I wear it. So that shame and reproach can truly be rolled away from you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that your identity can be preserved. Let me wear this crown of thorns so that you can wear the helmet of salvation. Amen. And when you wear the helmet Amen. of salvation, the word of God becomes your portion. It begins to wash you clean. It washes you clean. And then revelation begins to open to you in the word of God as light comes. And what does revelation do? It changes our lives. It elevates us. And financial life becomes the story of the past. And Praise then God. 
when you're established because of the work of the blood of Jesus, you will no longer remember the shame of your youth. Those days will be gone and the sorrows of your widowhood will be no more because of the work, the intentionality of the work that Jesus did, the things that he did not shortchange, the things that he allowed to befall him so we could be preserved. So how be it that we are still living in shame and living in disgrace? It is surely because we have not come to the true knowledge of the word of God. And that's where the devil wins over you. So I pray this day in the name of Jesus that as light enters by reason of the word today, that shame indeed and disgrace will roll away because of the blood of Jesus. Because you are understanding this message in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Why do we need to expand if we have time? I think I'm moving faster. So we need to expand because the season is right. Simply that the Lord has prepared us chronologically from the season of establishment, manifestation, and now expansion coming before us. So the season is right for expansion. That is simply one reason why we should manifest. Expansion, why do we need to expand? Because it is expected slash it is required. The Sorry, expansion is the expected and required response to what the father has been doing so he did not establish you for nothing he did not cause you to manifest for nothing he did all those for a reason it is why you ought to expand in the name of jesus and why so because we have been equipped for expansion and therefore we are required to provide the harvest the people and the goods at the harvest so let me talk about this so just last year why we just a day after we raised the altar, we were, you know, going back home and things just before we even left the vicinity, the area. We we were praying, myself, Mother Mildred, Pastor Kwame, um, I don't know if Pastor, okay, Pastor Jones wasn't there. Um, the other apostles and prophetesses were all there, you know, just praying and worshiping, just having a good time in the presence of the Lord. And the Lord began to speak to these people who have gathered in my name. Let me tell them something. And then one prophetess goes, oh, I see a truck coming from a narrow path and the truck stops at the gas station to fuel up. And as soon as it fuel up, fuels up, it takes off again and it begins to leave the gas station. And suddenly the road widens before the truck. As the truck approaches, the road widens. That was the word of knowledge that came to us while we were worshiping. And then the spirit of the Lord said that this season or a season is coming that he is equipping for expansion that is what the spirit of god was saying that in that that morning so we all received it and we gave god glory and do i see it happening yes i see it happening when the word of god is being released you guard it jealously you guard it jealously that was august till now i see the lord doing what he said and how is he equipping for expansion? So the, a truck, <clears throat> like we know it, is a large vehicle. And the load bed just behind it, where it carries the load, the goods, has the capacity to carry people too. If people want to stand it, they can, a lot of people can fill, it, fill up in there. So the Lord requires that when he equips us by virtue of salvation with the blood and all of that, He's, he, he requires that we go also and help other people to know him. He has equipped us with the word of God, with the gospel, so that we do not watch our neighbor suffer and die in, um, in their sinful ways, that we would rescue them from the trap of the enemy. And the Lord is interested in the goods too. He said, I have equipped you, go and bring the goods, bring the people. They're all mine because they are all his. He created all of them. So bring the people, bring the goods. He says in Isaiah 24, 24 to 25, can plunder be taken from warriors or captives be rescued from the fears? Plunder. What, are, what is plunder? Plunder is goods that have been forcefully taken from people. The devil has taken so much from us. Whether you know it or not, he has taken so much. If we have to list it, there is no time. But the Bible is asking, can plunder be taken from warriors? The Lord is saying, I have equipped you to bring back the goods and the people. It is the reason why I fueled the truck 
So the truck goes out and bring back the goods and the truck bring, brings back the people. We are those trucks that the Lord has equipped Amen. with fuel, fuel of the word of God, fuel of warfare. Our captives be rescued from the fears. Captivity are a people that have been held bound, bound by, by, by whoever captures them. The devil has captured a lot of people and plundered and stolen away our goods, forcefully taking them from us. So the Lord is saying, I have equipped you guys. Go bring back those goods, financial goods, companies, all the goods of the land, everything, the contracts that belong to the children of God, the money, the, the children. Why are we barren? Why are we poor? Why are we sick? Health, all of those things. Plunder be taken from warriors. Warriors stole it from us once upon a time. They says this season of expansion, we are warring to take back that which is ours. Even Amen. those who have been held captive by whatever means can be rescued from the fears. But this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors. It's why I send you out. It's why the Lord is sending us out as trucks with capacity to carry people and goods and return to him. Oh. And plunder, retreat from the fears. They stole our goods, a lot of them. We need to go out as trucks with a load bed that is empty, but then equipped with fuel to gather the people and the goods. I will contend with those who contend with you and your children I will save in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we Amen. take back that which is ours. So we have... um. Well, I'll get to that point. Let me just go down. So it, I wrote here, we have been equipped through the saving of our souls by the blood of Jesus. So Jesus has saved us and equipped us with the knowledge of his word, equipped us with the blood of Jesus, equipped us with salvation, too many things. And then he requires that we go also and bring people. Second Corinthians 6, 1 to 2 says, as God's partners, we have been equipped to a point where we are God's partners. We partner with him. We beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. For God says, at just the right time, I heard you while you were kicking in your blood, in disobedience, in brokenness, in depression, hatred, envy, jealousy, all kinds of things. I heard you on the day of salvation. I helped you. Indeed, the time... The right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. So God's partners do not accept this gift of salvation that the blood of Jesus has, you know, paid for us. This gift of kindness that God so loved his son that he sent his son, loved the world that he sent his son to die. And then we just ignore it after receiving this gift of life and forgiveness and salvation and all the goodness that is going on with us. And then we just neglect the people, we forget about the others out there. We just enjoy it and keep it to ourselves. No, now is not the time. The truck is being sent out to gather the goods and the people. So he requires of us as his partners who have been equipped with the word of God to go out and save the others. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Amen. So God was kind to us. His son, he sent his son to die for us. And we are equipped. The Bible says in John 4, 35, Say ye, say not ye, that there are yet four months and then cometh harvest. No, 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 not four months. Now, today. Don't say, oh, tomorrow. Oh, I'll see how it is going. Then maybe I can try next week. Uh -uh. Not even in four months. The Bible says, now, today is the day of salvation. Indeed, the right time is now. Do not forget. Do not ignore it there and then ignore it for the lord says because the lord heard you so he's sending you to others do not say do not procrastinate that in four months behold i say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest the people are there ready do not procrastinate do not say it's four months do not say it's tomorrow do not say it's next week Go now in the name of Jesus because I have equipped you. I believe that we have been equipped on this platform enough to harvest the people and even the goods in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Good harvest comes from the Lord. 
True enrichment comes from the blessing of the Lord with rest and contentment in knowing that it all comes from him. It is a Bible verse that says that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow with it. Amen. Amen. So, good harvest comes from the Lord. Good harvest. Avoid abusive relationships that promise you result. Do not be unequally yoked by marriage or by contract or by friendships or by company. By no means shall you shall we be unequally yoked. We need to avoid abusive relationships because what comes out of there that seems good wouldn't last. Guard against the spirit of division. Yoke onto the right company, business partners, the right ones, organizations, the right ones, and you name it. And team up for expansion like we already saw. Do not be pressured and let this type, sorry, do not be pressured and let this be your confession. Like Abraham, we say we are the descendants of Abraham, children of Abraham, <laughs> all that stuff. So we should speak like our father Abraham, who said that what? When he came from the battlefield, the king of Sodom was there. He said, the king of Sodom said to Abraham, give me the people, keep their goods. Hmm? Keep those goods, don't worry about the goods. Keep the goods, give me the people. And what did Abraham say? With raised hand, I have sworn an oath to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or a strap of a sandal, so that Amen. you will never be able to say, I made Abraham rich. That's right. So we cannot be pressured even as we expand. Be vigilant. Do not sleep on the switch. And let this be your confession at all time. When the king of Sodom says, take the goods, don't worry, keep the goods, just give me the people. It's a bad trick. Don't fall for it. He's yes. luring you to a bad trap. Because when you keep the goods, because the devil has the ability to give you goods, bad goods, of course, they look nice because he knows how to disguise like an angel of light. Come on. He's dangerous. But then when he gives you the goods and you keep them, that's a bad trap. So you begin to have these goods and you don't know if it's the father or the devil. You don't know when, you don't even know anymore. You're like, I have so much going on. I'm so rich. Is it is it the father or is it Mormon? Where where are you? So do not accept the goods from him, for there are no good goods from the devil. And do not give him the people either, because we have been equipped as trucks to go out there to bring the people and the goods. So leave nothing behind and say no to, to the king of Sodom. Because we know what Sodom can, can turn a person into. So he's asking mm. for the people so he can transform them and, and give birth to the LGBTQIAZRPQ, all of that. <laughs> Turn it back out. But we say no in the name of Jesus. You don't get the people. We don't want your goods either because our father is more than capable. Yeah. Yes, for yes, us. We go, we get the goods and then we get the people in the name of Jesus. We get Amen. the plunder and then we set free the captives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So just here, rounding up real quick, we are expected to recover territories by rebuilding it because we have been equipped. We faithfully preach the truth. God's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense, 2 Corinthians 6, 7. So how do we, we have the spirit of God working in us? And so how do we recover territories because we have been equipped? How do we do that? We have been equipped by being righteous. And how, how did we attain righteousness? The blood of Jesus. You see the blood of Jesus everywhere? Like you cannot. Please attend to us next year. I'm begging you today. <laughs> okay. Amen. So, amen. Apostle Jones knows better because she went before me. God amen. ahead. <laughs> Things like that. So we this thing, the blood of Jesus. So we have. We use the weapon of righteousness in the right hand for attack and then the left hand for defense. Righteousness that was brought about by the finished work on cross of Calvary. That's right. Just by living right with the Lord, right standing with the Father is enough weapon that we can use to recover territories. On bended knees as we pray, there's going to be a lot of prayers. There's going to be a lot of, we need to live right, of course, prayers. And then the Lord gives directions. 
And that's how we keep going. That's how we're going to rebuild these cities long devastated and ancient ruins and all of that in Turkey and other places that the Lord will reveal. You need to be righteous. Like I said, righteousness, with righteousness come, um, the Lord can entrust you with so much because you're righteous, you're living according to his standards. And also I said, it's okay to be offensive. Oh, I don't want to do warfare. I don't want to. Verse in the devil, the devil comes after me. No, war by living right is enough warfare. You don't want to warfare. You don't want to do this. You don't want, you don't want to look for trouble. Serious. Trouble will find you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Amen. So that's how we war in the name. That's one way to war. It's a weapon of righteousness that we use to attack. So just by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, he died for me and all of that goodness. You already you declared war already. So you, you just might as well just pray the prayer of warfare altogether because you cannot just leave some things out. Because the devil will come after you like his life depends on it. So be ready. Amen. Take it by force in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 61, 46. We will rebuild the ancient realm, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will retrieve them, though they have though they have been deserted for many generations. Foreigners will be your servants. Case in point, let's talk about Turkey. If we go there, like we are going to rebuild that devastated, long devastated city. Who, do, who are we going to meet there, Muslims, that we would convert and that will begin to serve us? They'll look at our vision and say, I can help you, I can help you. And that's how they begin to serve our vision. And then the Bible says they will feed your flocks and plow your field. They'll say, we know how to do this thing. This is how we do it over here. Then we will go show us how to do it. And then you see them doing the stuff. This is very practical. And then your vineyard, we're definitely going to hire people, you know, and being positive and I'm being, I'm already in the vision. I'm trying to work it out already in my head. You will be called priest of the Lord. When you go to this land of Muslims, you serve the Lord. You're definitely going to be called priest of the Lord. Ministers of our God, you will feed on the treasures of the nation and boast in their riches, says the word of God. There is treasure in that land, treasure, a lot of it. So let's look at the cities long devastated. The ancient ruins, the seven churches. We have Ephesus. What was Ephesus before? When I read this article, because I did some research, I saw that this city is long devastated. It used to be something big and that we need to rebuild. Oh, they just had their own history, but it just no longer exists. So Ephesus used to be a thriving commercial center and port city. So there was serious business there. Sim, sim, Smear, what? Smyrna. Smyrna. Yeah, that used to be a marketplace. <laughs> it used to be a marketplace, but it's no longer that. Pergamum, they say it was Satan's throne. So a lot of stuff went on there. And Jesus used to warn the people about that stuff. And then Theatira yeah. Thier used to be a business place. We had linen weavers, the bronze workers, potters and bakers. It was a thriving business place. And then we have Sardis was the wealthiest Roman city. And then so it's been rebuilt multiple times due to devastating earthquakes. And it had gold amassed from the nearby river. So there's so much treasure. There's so much that used to go on there, but they no longer exist. So the Lord is calling us to rebuild it, rebuild this. Philadelphia city of brotherly love, now known as the city of Allah because the Muslims have taken over. It's not supposed to be so. We have Laodicea, Built on a major highway and became a commercial and banking, commercial and banking center, known for ear and eye medicine and for black wool. Those things no longer exist. So we need to rebuild. The Lord is trying to raise up financial giants in the kingdom of God. He says that the wealth of the unrighteous shall be gathered for us. So we need to go and take it in the name of Jesus. And the last point just here that we saw already, we have been equipped by the blood of Jesus, simply. First, by our identity in Christ, which we saw before. I'm not going to beat the point too much because we already have talked about this during communion. We have been equipped by the blood of Jesus and then it has given us a new identity. Although some people don't want to accept it. The Bible calls us oak of righteousness. 
a planting by the Lord for the display of his splendor. But then when we when you look at Oak of Righteousness today, Oak of Righteousness is not acting as Oak of Righteousness. Oak of Righteousness is more like a microphyte. A microphyte is the smallest, the smallest plant, the name, the terminology for the smallest plant. Oak of Righteousness does not even know what Jesus has done for them. They don't even know what is rightfully theirs. You know, Oak of Righteousness is just, it's just there. Oak of Righteousness is scared to pray warfare. Oak of Righteousness is not, it's not in this thing. The Bible calls us joint heir with Christ, all because of what the blood of Jesus did. It calls us the righteousness of God. It calls us the salt of the earth. It calls us many things, a tree planted by the water. But then we're just, we're just not there yet. Some of us, not all of us. Because we, we have refused to even study the word of God. The Bible says that we would meditate upon his word day and night, that our way may be prosperous. Amen. How do you want your way to be prosperous if you do not even know who you are, by the way? That's where the devil wins. Because he, he knows your titles, he knows all of it, but then he's looking at you to see if you're even conscious of it, by the way. And that sums up the message for today. We need to be conscious of who we are in the name of Jesus. For the brokenness of Jesus was such that we regain our true identity and become who we truly are. We have been equipped indeed to expand in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless the sharing of his holy word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. 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 So we're gonna open the floor for a few comments. Because it's already one. Because it's already one PM. Amen. Amen. Um that was an awesome message, woman of God. Appreciate it. Um the expansion uh word was well uh said. Um I like a lot of what you said, and again, time for for time's sake. Um, one thing I do, um, I really like was how you talked about Mordecai. I never looked at Mordecai in the the portion that you mentioned about being positioned, sit still, where Mordecai sat at the gate and waited for his expansion, right? Mm -hmm. And um. You know, Mordecai was used um, representing like the Holy Spirit in, in Esther because he was leading her and guiding her while she was in the palace. But as the man Mordecai sat at the gate and, mm -hmm. and did not move from his position, he did not move from his assignment and he did just what God would have him to do. And in this season, sometimes we also have to remain focused, as you mentioned, uh, stayed in that place that God can speak to us, that we can draw nigh to him and we can hear his voice and that expansion will come, that elevation will come, but we have to remain in position. That was very, very powerful. Amen. 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 Just bear with us. Any more comments? Don't leave anybody. Let's get the comments, please. Amen. Thank you so much for the message. Really, I was blessed by it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to your husband as well. Mm -hmm. um, he said that, you know, why should we expand? Because the Lord commanded us to expand or has commanded us to expand and also because the season is right. Amen. Mm -hmm. and that really sums it all. And um, in this season, if I really want to capture everything that you have said, I will say that you know, you talked about the provisions in the blood of Jesus Christ, because everything that you spoke was connected one way or the other uh, to the blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, I received the aspect of capacity. Do what you're thinking. There is capacity. It reminded me and it, it reminded me of um, James Baker's quotes that prior preparation prevents poor performance. Amen. So we need to start preparing as we receive the ideas Put them to work so that in this season of expansion we will actually expand as the lord wants us to expand because like we have established on several fronts we cannot uh, 
we cannot expand what we have not manifested. So mm -hmm. once we receive that idea, let's start manifesting so that expansion can um, have its rightful place. And truly, I cannot overemphasize the aspect of having the right company, the right partner to work with. Even in ministry, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ sent out his disciples in tools. So there is, you have a pair spiritually or even in the business world, we all have pairs, but we need to trust the Lord to show us who our partner is because together you work better than working with everybody at the same time. Mm -hmm. Good things, you know, your husband spoke about obeying in order to receive expansion. We cannot overemphasize obedience. Obedience is a very powerful weapon. It works any day, any time. There are some things that work in seasons, but obedience has no season. It, it's just continuous. Amen. Yes. But yeah. if we just obey, then we have reduced our problems by at least 50% by default, just by obeying. Amen. Amen. So whether it's difficult or easy, just obey. Do your, Let's do ourselves a favor to obey um, in the kingdom. Um, it says we should develop capacity to receive and return wealth. Truly because we need to get to a place where we see ourselves as stewards. We own nothing. So it is not in our best interest to hold on to anything. Just see yourself as a steward, even to your child that you gave birth to. Amen? You're a steward mm -hmm. over that child. You're a steward over your husband or wife, over the people that the Lord permits you to give um, you know, instructions to. You're a steward. Do not hold on to anything or anybody. Amen. That's the beginning of a downfall. <clears throat> um, then divine expansion... God making room for us to become bigger. Yes, expansion is an opportunity for us to become bigger and serve him at a bigger and higher capacity. Then talking about serving your leader, you know, um, we've, we've gone through the book on kingdom mm -hmm. honor. We still ask that those who are not part of that session, buy the book, read it, listen to the audio on YouTube. You know, I don't... I, I am yet to truly understand, to, to really express that everybody has captured, you know, the true significance of serving your leader. You know, serving your leader is not sitting back and sending resources. That's not service. You see what I mean? You make your leader's vision your own. That's serving your leader. Amen. I'm not talking because I'm a leader or anything. You will have leaders in your life and you will be a leader. And that's exactly what it takes. That is what I do. I make my leader's vision mine and I foster it like it is mine until I see results. So it's not about sitting back and sending resources. That's not serving your leader. No, that's not what that we're talking about here. Amen. Yes. So Amen. I don't want to overemphasize on that point. Let it not come across like because I'm a leader, that's what it is. No, that is the principle. Now, how are we serving Jesus? We have made his mandate our own. That's right. We are running with it. That's serving Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That is how service or serving your leader looks like. And I bet you, until you do that, then will you really see the true change? There is a change that I'm looking for in each and everybody's life on this platform. When you start doing that, you will see, you will know. You will know. I say this by revelation and by experience. For the glory of God. So I'll, I'll leave it at that because of time. But thank you so much for the message. I've been blessed. I've taken in so many nuggets. I've been reminded that the Lord has lifted me in this season. And uh, I'll run with everything possible that I've received today. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Amel. Thank you all so much for this wonderful Amen. 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 Thank you. That's Kwame, are you going? Yes, ma'am. Thank you guys so much for... <laughs> For, for bringing this word to us. And um, I would just say that speaking on expansion, why expansion, you touch on alignment and obedience because these two are key to expansion. Um, all the other points that have been mentioned, I mean, I took copious notes and I will not go to repeat them, but I just want to touch on one thing that... Uh, Uncle Amel talked about that expansion, we are just getting started. As mm -hmm. far as expansion is concerned, we mm -hmm. are just getting started. Mm -hmm. And why do we get, how do we get to a place where we are just getting started with expansion? 
it is a place where we come to realize that self doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I cannot do it by myself. When you get to the place where you realize that I cannot do it by myself, your expansion has started. Amen. Because at that point, you surrender and you are willing to get help. That is the case of Jacob. Jacob becoming Israel and establishing the 12 tribes of Israel is because Jacob came to that place. When we talk of the wrestle that Jacob wrestled with the angel of God, that wrestle, that wrestling was part of the fact that Jacob was bringing his strength, his might, his all to the table saying, I can do this. I know how to get around with things. But it got to a point where his, um, his Achilles was dislocated and he could not wrestle anymore. He came to the end of himself as a wrestler. He came to a point where he said, you know what? The best I can get is for me to just hang on and say, please bless me. Please bless me because my strength is gone. Everything that I know how to do, I, I have put on the table and it has not worked. If the wrestling continued, he would have been overpowered because at that point, he's, you know, he had gotten a dislocation. And we all know how we function when we, we, when we are dealing with a dislocation in our body, it is fresh, it is new. You cannot really coordinate yourself. So Jacob did not overpower the angel of God. Jacob came to a place where he realized that I cannot do it by myself anymore. When I was listening to Uncle Amel speak, he spoke about how he felt that you know he could do it. And when he could do it, you know, as we understand these things, you're dealing with so much pressures. But when he came to the place where he realized that, you know, self doesn't work, he permitted the will of God to come in and the help to come in. So for all of us, those who surrender have become Israel. And it is now open for us to turn our eyes and see the angels who are positioned to be there to help us. And that's how Jacob came back and also faced his expansion. Amen. So it's a very good message. I really like it. And I thank God for every good point that, you know, um, you guys, you brought to the table. Talk about creativity and creative skills and God-given gifts. These are all tools that we have in us. These are all part of the capacity that we have that we don't even know that we have. But as we just keep in faith, keep going, because when you started, you say some will begin to manifest by faith. Because there is establishment, there is manifestation, and there is expansion. Amen. It's the capacity in you which God has given. Now, when you receive and you believe that, yes, the Lord has really said he is doing a new thing in our midst, and that new thing is enlarging our coast, enlarging our tents, spreading our tents. So when you see it, when you think it, you know that you are thinking it because of, you know, you have aligned yourself with the purposes of God and the thoughts in your minds have been dropped thereby. You delight yourself in the, in the Lord and he gives you the desires of your heart. So when you think it, just ask yourself, have I aligned myself with God? If you have aligned yourself with God, am I obedient to God? If you are obedient to God, then you know that what you are thinking is not your thoughts, but it is the, 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 the thoughts of that God has put in your mind. 
And God puts thoughts in your mind because it is time for you to call them forth here on the earth. Amen. The capacity, it comes with the capacity, it, come, it comes with the entire wherewithal that you need to see. So you go, you go, and as you go, you will begin to see the expansion. In you the begin name. to see the rights. Your, your prayer is to ask God that your eyes are open to see the right partners. Your mm -hmm. cry is to, for your mind to open to receive and be also a great team player so that you can work well as a team because the Lord has given the capacity mm -hmm. and it is just for us to, to run with. You ask a question, what is wrong with submitting? You have to come to the place where you realize that one, the authority is right. When you see that the authority is right, some of your guards are, are, are let loose. You are more open to start submitting. Mm -hmm. And when you come to the place where you realize that self is just you, one person, whereas when you submit and let the Lord take over, you don't know how many people will be with you, then submitting becomes, uh, becomes easier. You know, yes, the season for expansion is here. Go into it, take a chance, and Amen. see that the fruits will be will be ready and will be harvested. Thank you Amen. guys so much. That's my contribution. Amen. 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 Can I just say one thing before we, we go? Um yeah. brother Armel, um my apologies actually. Um for time I just wanted to comment on on what your wife had said, but also just to know that your contribution as well was very important. You uh, actually um, impacted the message because you experienced what you talked about. And mm -hmm. there's nothing like being touched with the infirmity of whatever the situation is. So I do thank you. And um, I apologize, not that I was ignoring you, but I just wanna let you know that I did receive from your message and it really impacted the message because you spoke on your experience concerning, you know, how God moved in your life and how you see the expansion manifest. So I thank God for you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you all for your inputs. Uh, I think that the floor for contributions is now closed. So okay. expansion is here to stay. Someone is talking. Yeah, I didn't want to, um, I know it's way past time. Everybody kept contributing and contributing. But thank you all for actually bringing this powerful, powerful message. And I'm going to tell you that. I mean, there's no way I was just going to sit quiet. But um, Daddy K and, you know, Mommy Mildred and um, Apostle Jones, you all said everything that was in my mind. Actually, that the kid touched so many things. I was just, I was just about to explode on them. But Uncle Amer, my guy, thank you so much, man. The example you used, I mean, it's a real life scenario. You see something happening, and then you, you're like, okay, you know what? Yeah, I surrender. Yes, you know, so. <laughs> Thank you so much for that message. I listened to every bit of it from the beginning to the end and every contributions. And I must tell you that I'm blessed, man. And messages like that we learn, right? Yes, from what you've experienced, I'm not going to want to experience something like that because you've already experienced it for mm -hmm. us. So we should just avoid it by doing what's right, by accepting that we need help. And then again, if we go through establishment and manifestation, it's but fair and right that we should expand, right, in every dimension of our life. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that's what the law says. We should expand. We have established, we have manifested, then it's very normal and expected that we should expand. So um, I just bless you guys for this message. And I say thank you and wherever um, the time that the Lord that you put in to actually listen to the Holy Spirit and, you know, prepare. May the good Lord actually replenish you, your time in every mm -hmm. area. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Amen. Amen. That's it too. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Would that be all? I guess yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so this is a decree by the Lord that go ye forth and expand. Expand mm -hmm. with here to stay. Enjoy. Amen. And we share the grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, uh, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. The church of God say amen. 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 <laughs> amen. God bless everyone. Bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.